Back it up, Terry. Oh, Lord. Clen is in. The dreaded Clen. Wasn't too bad this morning. It hit harder when I had my black coffee. As you know, those that have uh, taken uh, black coffee in your himbine will know the effects of that. Try doing black coffee, Clen, and your himbine. My himbine isn't here yet. Your himbine, your himbine, your himbine. Stop saying it. Week number three. Big swoosh, big whoosh weight drop this weekend, 104 down to 102. So I lost about six key in just over three weeks. And then here I have my, I have my contest prep stack, which I'm dying to use because the last couple of weeks I've felt that drop off in food and drop off in anabolics. But uh, just cruising at the moment, 125 meg test. Got that CV Pro Plus in to make some improvements to lipids. And uh, yeah, all very, all very well. We have had a food drop, the first food drop. So 50 carb off a training day, so now it's 200 protein, 450 carb, 80 fat, and then just sub 20 fat on a rest day. So down from 100 to 80, which is cool. Carbs kept the same. But food's going well. I'm actually, I'm actually looking forward to a food drop because there's occasions on training days where I've kind of exerted myself so much, my appetite gets hit. I'm going to my office tomorrow. The office is finally here, the first Team Cycles office, and I can put my, my present that I got from my mum up, the uh, Solomon edit from Spotify. Okay. Estás escuchando Ibiza Globo Radio with Jose Maria Ramo. Nothing's really changed in terms of the peri workout nutrition. So, pre intro and post workout food is exactly the same. What I'm doing is I'm subbing some food away from my fish and rice mix. I'm completely taking the rice away, so it's just fish and a rice cake, fish and nuts, and then I've got my chicken and rice and my bagel and granola. So uh, performance still won't be really affected too much. Psychologically, the food is still going in the same, which is cool. So I have to go and get some dark chocolate, 90%. I have one square with my oats. I've uh, got into the habit of having a little 15 minute power on that before training. Had some good sessions. I think Joe's down in the gym today, which is good. 7R. Filming some content with Gigi. Naughty little combo, this. I was very hesitant when I saw green apple and cherry cola. I thought, then I had it for my last session. And the combination between the cherry and apple hits first, and then you get a little injection of cola. It's very, very nice. It is time. It's time for push. That's the, uh, do you know how people on Instagram make themselves bigger than they actually are in real life? You get a wide angled lens, you step to the side a little bit, and then you use the warp. Uh -huh. Tricks of the trade. We're in for push, and uh, I'm gonna take you through some mobility. I should get Ignacio to do. Uh, your mobility is good for shoulders. What, what, what mobility do you do for shoulders? Come on, Ignacio, Ignacio. What, what, uh, guys? what uh, sh so, shoulder mobility? What I usually do, I do about three or four movements. I do with the stick. Yeah. What do you call this? Yeah, yeah. Stick. stick. This one to open up the chest a little bit and get yeah, some yeah. shoulder mobility. Yeah. So I can only do that with a, with like a band. Oh, yeah, it's it's the same. As yeah, long as you yeah. put it, you know, tension on the, on the, on the shoulder and the chest. Of course. Then I like to open up also, a little bit wow, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then behind the back. Yeah. This one is, is the best one for my shoulders. Right, okay. You pull up with your with your other hand. Okay, so it's behind. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, go yeah. slowly, you pull up until you feel Beautiful. the pressure on your shoulders. Beautiful. And then you've got the with the band, you attach it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And you open rotate. up. Yeah, rotate with move without moving your Mr. elbows. Mr. Power Lifter. <laughs> so uh, I'll run through a few of my mobility exercises that I've been given from Ross at Alpha Health and since working with him for the last 10 or so months has been fantastic. I've had kind of issues with this right shoulder, but it's more so due to tightness of this right pec. And uh, let's run for a few now. First exercise, again, we're using the stick, going to a little bit of spinal flexion here, just so we can take any activation in the lower back. So hands just a small width outside, shoulder width, lean forward, and then we go up. And we should really 
feel it between our shoulder blades. Hold for about 10 seconds, and you can repeat three or four times. And then again, still using a bench. We want to almost imagine that we're using this bench as uh, the starting position of like a straight arm pull down when we're on the cable, be it an easy bar or a rope. Out in front, turn the hands up, thumbs up, and then reach up one at a time. Probably see a lot more distance on my left compared to my right. And then we can get the green yoga band out. So this is just a, a green yoga band, not the sort of resistance band that you're used to seeing when we're doing reverse banded hacks or leg pressing. I want to get a little bit of tension and resistance, so place it on your foot. You can obviously dictate how much tension you want. Wrap it round the hand, keep the elbow close to the torso, abduct, rotate, press, and slowly come down. We'll do that 10 times on each side. And then what I also like to do just to finish before is get like a, a hockey ball or like a hard object, hard ball, and just go behind the shoulder blade. Sometimes it's quite nice just to clear out all that kind of gunk before you go into a, a heavy pressing or a push session. Right, I'm gonna leave you with uh, TM Cycles voiceover now. A bit more spicy that TM Cycles coffee blend number four. Prefer a bit sweet and nutty. Coffee mod, TM Cycles coffee, coming to a coffee cup near you very soon. Thank you, Gennaro, much love. Mobility work done. I now take you through today's push session. As with previous training blocks, the emphasis on chest is relatively low. The work has been done in the off-season to bring up the kind of thickness and density to that upper shelf. You'd have seen me, Josh and Joe do a lot of heavy pressing, Cybex incline, Cybex shoulder press. And the increase in arm volume has meant that the balance of my upper portion of the physique looks a lot better. And Callum noticed that in Sunday's check-in, which is fantastic. So the real emphasis and priority over this next phase is to ensure that leg tissue, posterior chain, arms is retained, if not increased. We're now back in a position where testosterone's in a super physiological range. We're adding in other compounds. So we're definitely in the sort of driving position, driving seat where we can grow into this show and we will do so. It very much goes on visual feedback now because you'll often find that weight stagnates a little bit. But so we opened up with a, a slight incline, dumbbell, chest press, Little two second hold in that length and range, and then we go into continuous reps for the back offset. Then onto one of my favorite chest exercises, the seated D-handle cable press. It's so unique to the individual that you're not gonna get that from, say, a fixed machine, be it a Cybex or an Arsenal or a Hammer Strength. Those companies do a very good job at going through that particular motion, but what the, the free motion of the cables here is allow us such a, a natural pressing movement that you're not gonna get that from a fixed machine. Again, the D-handle is allowing that natural rotation of the wrist that you're probably not gonna get from a fixed machine. There's a really nice amount of eccentric loading here as well and as the set gets harder we can just envisage and imagine pushing against that pad as much as possible you could you could make some adjustments and add some daisy chains on it if you wanted to uh, it's at that point where josh and joe would kind of kick in to get short a lot of work on the closed cable stack today what i'm doing here is i'm just using a glute band to wrap around the foam roller to put it in that fixed position otherwise it's a right pain in the ass trying to throw it behind your back whilst getting the, the cuffs on what the what the foam roller is allowing us to do here is to create such a stable environment that we can put so much emphasis through the chest. It also allows us, as you can see, to get into that length and position of the chest a little more, open up that scapula, and then as we get short, I'm just envisaging to, to, to keep my elbows and keep my arms through that midline. One set eight to 10, one set 10 to 14. You could argue here that this particular movement should be placed at the beginning of the workout. You know, we talk about getting that short stuff done first, and that's essentially as we're less fatigued, our ability to get the chest or get the back short as possible is there but as i've only got two sets on the incline two sets on the d handle press my, my chest is still in the position where i can get it relatively short on my back days for example when i've got three or four rowing movements and then we would they would be in a position where we'd get the short stuff i.e a lap pull down or a pull over straight arm pull down done first but as i said this this uh the way in which this push session is is kind of programmed i can still get it 
relatively short. Finishing off with some dead work here, we've got D1, D2. So we're essentially supersetting a cable line cuff lateral raise with a standing cable cuff lateral raise. Brace that scapula down to the bench, create as much stability as possible. The cable system will play into our favor here. As you can see, it will drop off where it are most weakest. So this particular movement and the crucifix that you've seen me, Josh and Joe train at Crayford, two of the almost most complete dealt exercise two of my favorite delt exercises too and then we go into the standing cable cuff lateral raise you'll be very fatigued very tanked here i know it's hard but try it as best as possible keep those those shoulders locked down and just place as much intent through the length and range of those delts and and by all means get some partials done just to get that volume in so i'll probably manage about four or five and then we'll chuck maybe two or three partials in now we're going to some tricep work. So with this push session, it, it's tricep, bicep, tricep. And with our pull, it's bicep, tricep, bicep. So a pretty even even split over the week between both bicep and tricep. So we open up with a dual arm cable crossbody tricep extension. Two sets, eight to 10, one set, 15 to 20. You know, upon review in this particular footage, we could have dropped load a little bit just to get those triceps a little shorter. Ego took over a little bit. But uh, tricep is an area that I've had to really improve over this off season. It's been fantastic working with Joe. Because he's got, I mean, he's got some phenomenal arms, and he, our, our boy Joe, and he's been uh, on the money giving me some pointers and some tips on execution for triceps in particular. But I think we've done a relatively good job at kind of balancing bicep and tricep out a little. Then we go into the standing dual arm D handle low cable curls. If you have a, a cybex here or an ability to kind of create stability by putting the the pad behind, then then by all means do so. I've done this particular this particular movement for quite some time, and the ability for me to be as stable as possible is. Uh, it, it is okay. Those that are starting out that want to try this particular movement, I would maybe advise getting a, a bench at 90 degrees, ensuring we're in that shoulder extension. So so hands, the starting position behind ourselves to ensure that we can get as much stimulus through the bicep in that length and range as possible. Uh, again, we talk about training the bicep and tricep through its contractile ranges. And we did a, a really nice video on the TM Cycles members site where we went through some pointers on how to, to grow our arms. I think myself and Josh included have done a really good job at making those improvements that we've needed in our in our off season that's been very simply training through those contractile ranges ensuring that form is on point try not to, to let ego take uh, take pole position you know sometimes we have to hold our hands up and admit that we do and i think a big area for, for triceps in particular as i mentioned the just before this is the the amount of heavy pressing that we did during our off season you know that shoulder that shoulder press that cybex incline press has, has helped a lot and it's not really direct tricep work but it's definitely uh it's definitely helped. Now on to our final tricep exercise. It's brand new for me. I haven't tried this before. Callum's programmed it in. I think if you're a beginner watching this, then you probably want to opt for like a, a dual rope overhead extension just to kind of get used to ensuring the cable is aligned with the path and direction of your upper arm. Then once we've milked that and understood the mechanics, then possibly try this one. I'd also advise if your gym has it, you know these single ropes with the rubber at the bottom, place those on each on each cable here just because when you increase that load for these particular types of movements, the the ability to grip it and, and it gets a little gnarly and kind of cuts up your hand. But a really nice, a really nice movement. I'm, I'm still getting my head around it, still getting used to it. A little spending uh, about three seconds in that lengthened portion. But uh, yeah, really, really nice contraction and uh, definitely looking forward to kind of progressively overloading this one uh that's that's all that's the push and arm session done any questions about the exercise do head on down below enjoy the rest of the video come on what's this say hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to cardio sessions with tmc we've got ourselves a bike this is from uk sport and leisure it came next day delivery very easy to assemble 18 kilogram flywheel the seat's not bad i might have to get a, an additional kind of support or a bit of comfort but uh, we got cardio three lots of 20 minutes fasted on wednesday saturday and sunday so there are my my rest days what i'll do is i'll wake up i'll uh, have my black coffee i'll hydrate have my 20 mcg of clean the ability to kind of get my heart rate to that desired 130 bpm is a lot easier now cleansing compared to when it wasn't i was really having to kind of power walk my way to 130 but we've got 20 minutes on here then what we'll do is we'll jump off then I'll, I'll do my usual route, get my steps in, come back, have, well, I've got to go to the office at half 10, so I might eat when I get back. Very exciting times, TMC HQ. No, it looks so much better than when I first, yes. when I first saw it. No, it was just like exposed brickwork, the floors weren't done. 
Hello, welcome to another leg day. The four week cruise is done. We start to escalate, not even escalate, just go back to off season doses. With Primo and Test, we'll save the, uh, we'll save the mast and trend for when we require it. We're 14 weeks out. Check in with Cal on Sunday, very positive. New tissue is very, very, all in capital letters, evident in this week's video. Now we're seeing adiposity pull away. It's starting to reveal the changes in your shape. So, uh, yeah, very, very excited. The last couple of weeks with that drop in food and dropping anabolics have kind of been noticeable. But uh, now we're back on the up, which will put us in a position whereby scale weight will probably bump up a little bit, then drop down, and then sort of stagnate almost, and then condition will come in, which is usually the case when, when you start to put slightly more and higher compounds in as well. So leg day today, aiming for the, uh, a slight bump in, in weight on the hack, and then we'll go on the leg press 4x4 cluster, see if we can squeeze out another plate. Yes. <coughs> the music sounds better with you. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> In there, in there, Tom. Who? Oh. Hope you enjoyed the video. What have you got in your mouth? What? What? <laughs> I can't say the letter T. What? <laughs> I'm doing my cardio now. I hit on the bike. I sit on the bike for 20 minutes. Finally the one fucking... The, finally the one teeth whitening product that doesn't make my gums feel like they're gonna fall off. Remember, when you, if it, anyone ever used to use Crest? I think they're actually banned now. Mum used to get loads of Crest stuffing. I think that's the reason why my gums are fucked, because I was using that. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. We'll do like a, a similar style training session where we go into detail about exercise selection very soon. 
any questions as per head on down below to the comments section and uh, I'll see you in the next video. We're gonna discuss how to negate, how to handle clenbuterol side effects. Thank you, good man. Much love.